Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Welcome, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you for joining me again on the Pet Parenting Reset. Today's episode is so, so fun because I have a very special guest, my husband, J.R. Fisher. We are going to be talking about our journey to a raw food diet for our dogs. So, oh, really, and really, really quickly before I let him talk, and I know he is like chomping at the bits to talk to you today, I have a really, really special fun surprise for you at the end of today's episode. So make sure you stay tuned. So here's my husband, JR. (laughs) Hello. How are you doing today? Wonderful. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for asking me on your awesome show. (laughs) Thanks. Well, I'm happy to have you because I thought it would be really fun to have both of our perspectives on our journey to a raw food diet, because we obviously come, we have like two different point of views. And I think maybe there were a couple of steps along the way where you might've been a little bit more reluctant than I was. So most definitely. Most definitely. (laughs) Yes. So I think like many, many, many people out there who have, whether they've dealt with a sick dog, or they've just learned a piece of information that they didn't have before, and it startled them. And so they started looking at healthier food options for their dogs. We started out very much like pretty much everyone else I have talked to, how how we kind of just wung it and did a home-cooked meal for our dogs. At the very beginning of all of this, we were just like, can't be any worse, right? And of course, I look back now and I kind of cringe at what we did, but I I couldn't possibly change it because it got us where we are today. And fortunately, it wasn't, you know, a very long period of time, but we started out with just chicken and rice and vegetables. And we're like, it's got to be better than kibble. And, you know, our veterinarian, fortunately, at the time was very supportive and said, yeah, I mean, maybe add some tomatoes. So we were like, I don't know about that, but you know, it, it caused us to start thinking about it more. And, and I started finding more veterinarians out there who were doing, uh, you know, home cook recipes that were balanced for our dogs. And I bought Dr. Judy Morgan's book. So we were making her pup loaf and that kind of transitioned into, I wonder what our dogs would like, how much healthier they would be. And we just went on fully raw and we did and we haven't looked back so that's a really really condensed version of what happened but i have a bunch of questions for you so do you have anything to add to that like um i think uh it's important to add that why we did it i mean why did we switch from kibble to anything else um i I, yeah i think it'd be good if you enlighten the people in that because it's it's a weird thing to do i mean you're supposed to feed them dog food dogs eat dog food right (laughs) <laughs> yeah. That's well, you know, Claire was not the healthiest of dogs when, and I haven't really shared too much about Claire. Claire was the first dog I ever adopted on my own as an adult. You had Gracie when we met. So I had this little black chihuahua and yes. then we adopted Claire and Claire was a Pomeranian, a small Pomeranian uh, that had a lot of issues. Yeah, she had a lot of health issues and we cleared up as much as we could with the veterinarian, right? So when we got her, all of, you know, all of her teeth were rotting out of her mouth and she had the mammary tumor, she had seizures. And so of course we got her mouth cleaned up and a bunch of teeth fell out and were pulled and we had her mammary tumor removed. And um, we did start her on seizure medication, but I don't, I don't know if you remember, but it was that like her seizures were getting further and further apart with the home cooked foods. And then once we started raw food, I mean, we went years up until the end of her life when she started having them again, she didn't have any. Yeah. And she had a lot of unusual behaviors. 
uh, because she was so mistreated, she wouldn't walk across a room. She would walk down the sides of the wall and rub her side against the wall to make herself less noticeable. Because I think when she was noticed before, she was probably abused. Uh, and then when she did finally want to be with us, she wouldn't come get the, on top of the couch with you. She would get underneath the couch and just sit underneath you. So she had a lot of unusual behavior. So if you have a dog that does different things, you know, it could be partially their diet. It could be what happened to them. But she was very unique in that way. She was. And it is interesting how diet affects behavior. And it's not going to, of course, fix all behavior problems. That's why we also need training. Um, and we empathy because for in her situation, she um, was very likely abused before we adopted her. But yeah, the, the, there are a lot of factors, but diet definitely does affect behavior. So I do have some questions for you if you're ready. And I want everybody to know, I thought she was crazy when she wanted to switch our dogs off dog food because <laughs> I grew up, you know, I mean, you buy the best dog food you can in the store because it's dog food. You can't feed them people food. We were told, don't feed them from the table. It's bad for them. You know, now looking back on that, it sounds insane, but I mean, that's, that's how I grew up. That's what I was told. You never feed them table food. It's bad for them. Yeah. We're actually going to talk about that a little bit more with some of the questions that I have for you. So the first question is think back to when you fed kibble to your dogs. Did you ever consider what was actually in the food? This is where I have to uh, be honest, and I, I guess I was lazy, but no, I never did. I assumed, as a lot of us do when we're younger, that whatever the companies or government or whatever tells you is correct, and you need to do it. Um, and unfortunately, as we've both gotten older, uh, we question everything now, which is made for a better life for us and our pets. But I, I never thought twice about what was in kibble. Yeah, no, I didn't either. I mean, even at the point where we met, if my vet told me to do something or she said this was what you should be doing, mm -hmm. that's <clears throat> to the T, that's what I did. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't question it either for a very long time. So I completely understand. Um, so what kept you feeding kibble and not even considering fresh foods? Were there fears around feeding people foods? And you kind of already alluded to well, yeah yeah i did because i i um i never considered it because it, you don't you don't feed them people food there's people food and there's dog food they're two different kinds of foods and that that's what they're made for no more than i would have fed myself kibble because you know that's made for dogs so i it, it wasn't a matter of keep feeding them that i didn't know there was an alternative and i didn't know i had no idea and i think that's true with most people they don't know anything about this this is a really a, a kind of weird thing when you first hear it uh, and it's going to get weirder, I'm sure, as you ask me more questions. But you're like, why are you even questioning this? You know, why did you question this? Yeah, because it's the idea of people food just, I mean, angers me almost. Like the crap we buy that's processed. OK, we can call that people food. But I mean, real whole foods, you know, pigs and cows and chickens and you know, broccoli, fruits, vegetables, that, what else do animals eat? Like that's what they actually eat. Yeah, when they were in the wild, you know, they didn't cook down a bunch of uh, ingredients into a hard pellet and eat it. And, and you know, it's funny because if you see a dog now eating kibble food, you know, it looks like they're struggling to even chew the stuff. It's like they're like forcing it to try to get it down, uh, which is kind of interesting to me. Yeah, well, even last night, so last night um, we went to an in a client's house and um, my husband comes with me to video so that I can provide that. Any any really great nuggets that may happen in a training session, I always put that in my online courses uh, for my online students. So uh, he comes with me to, to record so I don't have to try to do double duty, but it was really interesting because you know, a client always calls me up and says, I'm, I, you know, I need help with my dog for this reason. And a lot of times they have other dogs and they're like, no, my other dog's fine. We don't need to worry with her. But then we get into it and they're like, oh yeah, my other dog here has this issue or that issue. And last night, you know, she was talking about her little poodle, Chloe, and how like she'll go for days without eating. And it's like, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I had to eat too. 
<laughs> I bet. So, okay. When we began to feed Gracie and Claire fresh foods, we supplemented kibble for balance. Um, because remember when we started, we were just like in the crock pot making, you know, chicken and rice. And we added in a few vegetables, which I think was just like peas and carrots. Right. Um, so what at that point, if any apprehensions did you have about feeding real food over packaged food? Um, I thought it was really kind of a good idea because they all had health issues. And, you know, I, I mean, your health is really directly con uh, controlled by what you eat and exercise and all those things. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. People don't want to believe that they want to believe they can take a vitamin and it'll be fine. Um, so I, I, I thought it was a good idea. I really did to, to change something, to do something uh, as opposed to just sit back and, you know, give them kibble every single day because we were told to do that. Yeah, yeah. So when we took the leap from our homemade cooked foods to a fully raw food for the dogs, were you skeptical at that point? Well, I thought that was totally weird. It's like, why would you feed? I mean, there's going to be bacteria in it. They're going to get sick. I mean, why would you feed an animal raw stuff? That made no sense to me. Now, keep in mind, we didn't go to the grocery store and buy raw meat and feed it to our dogs because you don't know what bacteria is on that. You don't know what the process that went through. Um, so Jessica was able to find some companies that processed it cleanly um, so that, you know, you didn't have any of those issues with bacteria and, you know, all germs and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think it is important how you source it. I wouldn't recommend going to the grocery store and buying a package of ground hamburger meat and feeding it to your dog because that meat can have, you know, bacteria, salmonella, all these different things because of how they ground it up and how they treated it. Um, so I think it is important to have a really reliable source. Yeah, what's what's interesting about salmonella specifically is that um, raw dog foods that are commercially available or and cat foods, um, there is a zero tolerance for salmonella. Um, the FDA has a, a zero tolerance. But what you buy for human consumption at the grocery store, those meats, fruits and vegetables, all have like, I, I think it's different depending on what type of meat it is and if it's a fruit or a vegetable, but it's like, you know, a small percentage of salmonella is allowed. So there is a difference there, but um, also interestingly, salmonella is, is primarily our concern because we can get sick from salmonella muchies. Like dogs almost never get sick from sam or cats from salmonella because they have a shorter digestive tract and also it's more acidic. So their bodies are actually designed to handle it. It doesn't affect them in the same way it affects us. So that's a, you know, a really interesting like distinction <laughs> between and those. You're wearing a really cool shirt. What is your shirt today? I didn't We are going to talk today. about my shirt today at the end of today's video. What does it say? I talk, talk, keep, it says, the, talk. Oh, I see. Talk dogs to me. I've seen this shirt. This is an amazing shirt. I know people want that shirt. I, <laughs> I know. And if you're um, just listening to the podcast, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you where you can see the shirt I'm wearing right now <laughs> and get your own. So stay tuned for that. Um, so thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> so right now, would you ever go back to feeding kibble to your dog? No, 100% no. Yeah. I thought that would be a quick answer. <laughs> I, I don't even have to think about it. Um, so right now, what would you say to someone who does feed kibble to their dog? Um, I think they are probably like me. If you know the facts about raw food diet uh, versus kibble, you would never feed your dog kibble ever. Um, and, you know, I actually own a company that manufactures meat and we can meat. Um, and I know for a fact that the meats that are stamped, you know, for human consumption uh, are okay. Uh, and if they're not stamped for human consumption, they, you know, the, the, the cow was diseased or it had cancer or whatever it was, or it died early and sat around, they actually use that meat to make kibble, which is crazy. And, you know, those people listening to this are going to go, there's no way. No, no, they do. Um, they, they can have a flooded out field of cattle of 100 cows and they all die and they all drown and they can be sitting there for days. And those are going to be stamped and used for uh, the consumption of kibble. And that's what you're feeding your dog. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is hard. It's it's hard to know what you know sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. So what do you think would be better? Either if 
big pet food corporations embraced raw feeding and started coming out with really, you know, with, with lines of foods that were fully raw and balanced and available on the market for people? Or do you think it would be better if these big pet food companies lose their market share to smaller companies and DIYers, people who are making their dog's food at home? Well, a, a big company basically is controlled by two factors. They're controlled by cost and they're controlled by demand. OK, so I think um, on their own, without the demand, uh, no big company is going to switch over because it's a whole lot cheaper to make kibble than it is to make raw food diet. I mean, obviously, and, and that's always been the case, right? I mean, you know, good food costs more than bad food just in general. You know, you, I'm sure there's a few exceptions to the rule. Um, I think the, the small food companies are in it for the right reason. Um, so I'd probably like to see them um grow and prosper more than seeing a big corporation switch what they do because that big corporation has known all along what they were selling why they were selling it uh and they did it without regard for the health of the pet so i would have to uh, vote for the small companies and i'm a small company too so i would in in most cases they had different motives uh than do big corporations not all not all big corporations are bad you know i love me some tesla but, you know, I think for the most part, and Tesla is one of those few companies, uh, not to get off on a tangent, but they, their goal is to improve the world, okay, and improve things for people. Uh, I don't think most dog food companies are like that. And I don't think most big companies are like that. I think they lose sight of that because of shareholders and, you know, stock and profits and all that. So I'd, I'd love to see some of these small people just grow into big companies. Yeah, I think I'm totally with you on that. I wanted to get your perspective on it as a you know business owner and somebody in the food industry. And I'm so glad you brought up Tesla because do you remember the video I did on YouTube? Um, oh, it was may maybe within the last a year ago or so where I um, I was. I remember all to your videos. So that shouldn't be a problem. Which one was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, it was the one where. Elon Musk was talking to the Wall Street Journal and he talked about supply and demand and big pet food companies and how it was it was really an interesting what was I don't the point? Think, huh? What was the point? Oh boy, he was talking about how um, huge corporations don't have any need to be, oh, what do I, what, what, the, what is the word I'm looking for? To, they don't have any, they, they create the demand, basically. They don't have any need to acquiesce to whatever the consumer actually wants because they have such a huge share um, mm -hmm. of the, the market space that what they make is what people are gonna buy, basically. Um, and he, he, was talking about car manufacturers, but he brought up these big pet food companies and said, you know, there's basically three of them, which is true. And, you know, there's, they don't have any desire or need to change to benefit the end user because they have such a large market. Yeah. And, and what she's, I know what she's alluding to. I had, I spent 20 some odd years in the car business and I watched year after year how the manufacturers would build a bunch of cars and we had to buy them. You had to buy X number of each car and put it on the lot. And then you had to sell that to people, which is not Tesla's business model. Tesla's business model is um, what is it that people are looking for? And for the longest time, they've been looking for an electric car. And why didn't they buy the electric car? Because they didn't go far enough, because they didn't have uh, comfort in them, because they had no power, because they were slow. So Elon says, well, if that's what people want, why don't we build a car that goes a long distance and it's really fast and it looks good and it's comfortable. And people are like, Oh, well, that'd be crazy, you know, to make something that people want. And he says on top of that, instead of making a bunch of them in different colors and interiors and all that and parking them somewhere, why don't we have people just come in and pick the exact car they want and we'll build it. And then in six weeks or whatever it is, in eight weeks, they'll have their car. And that way there's no inventory. Um, and that really went against the automotive industry. And I think that's what's happening with pet food now, because this, this is out of the bag. Okay. A lot of people are buying raw food diets now. And if you're listening to this and you haven't considered it, you will in the near future. So you, you might as well just go ahead and do it now. <laughs> so, 
uh, Go but ahead and um, it's like none of you probably considered uh, electric cars because you had that you had that view that uh, electric car was slow and didn't go very far and it was ugly and it had no room. And now that Tesla came along, look at all you guys who bought Teslas, right? I got my order for my truck in. Um, but I think that the dog food is going in the same direction now. Uh, there's more and more people getting involved and it's more people who are understanding it. We have access to the internet now, we can research it. You know, they can't hide behind, you can't figure out what we're doing anymore. That doesn't exist anymore. Now we can research stuff. Uh, and you want to check your sources, of course, but you can figure out what's in the food now. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It, it One of the really good things about the Internet, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of good things. You know, any tool can be used for negative or positive. It's just, you know, how you utilize that tool. Yeah, for sure. So what benefits have you noticed when switching to a raw food diet for our dog? Well, it's night and day. It really is. I mean, the dog we have now, the majority of her life, she's, I guess, been on a raw food diet, wouldn't you say? Uh, how many um, years has Kim been on it? Probably, yeah. Yeah, she, so she is, by the time this podcast goes up, she will be eight. And we've decided her birthday is Halloween. <laughs> and she was two and a half when we adopted her. So, yeah, the majority of her life. Yeah, and I mean, our dog is so well behaved. She's so calm. She and, and you know you may say well that's just the personality of the dog but that wasn't her personality when we first got her. Um, her hair is beautiful. Her coat looks good. Her eyes look good. Um, she never has any health issues. Uh, and both of our other dogs we had always had health issues. Always had. And some of it's neglect. But you know what? Kim was neglected too. She's a rescue dog also. Um, and and we've seen it time and time again where people switch the diet and they get healthy. And and sometimes if you tweak it a little bit in the wrong direction. You get bad results. You know, you were saying last night um, that uh, you had bought a really good brand of dog food, but they they called it lightly cooked. It was lightly cooked, uh, which does change the food a little bit. And we were feeding some of that to Kim just to try it out because, you know, the lady suggested it. And Kim started having upset stomach and diarrhea and problems. We were like, whoops, you know, that's just not good for their system. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it's made a world of difference. And, it, it, you know, if you're having a problem with training, if you're having problems with your dog listening, if you didn't feel good, okay, and you were sick, how much would you want to listen to somebody? I know when I'm sick, I don't want to do what anybody wants, okay? So if you're having these issues where the dog's not listening to you, it could be as simple as changing a diet. Why not try it? Yeah, that's always the first thing I recommend, and you know this, to... Mm -hmm the clients that I actually get to go into their home and train with them because it's, I mean, it, it's the foundation of everything. <laughs> yeah, it is your nutrition. Yeah. So do you feel like it's too expensive for the average person to be able to feed their dog a raw food diet? I think that's relative. Okay. Um, I think that uh, if you buy a dog or you adopt a dog or whatever you have, however you acquire a dog, you owe it to that animal to provide the best life to them you possibly can. If you cannot afford to provide, you know, heat and a roof and good food, then you shouldn't have the dog. So when people say, well, you know, do with, you know, do with what you got, and, you know, and that's all you can do. Uh, no, you owe it to them. You really owe it to them. So I'm pretty hardcore on this. Uh, you know, if, if your child, um, you know, wasn't getting enough food, would you work a couple more hours to get, you know, enough food to feed your child? Because this is a family member. So you owe it to that. And it's not that much more money. Okay. Think of it this way. Think of it this way. If you spend a little bit more on the food, but you don't have to spend hundreds or thousands at the vet, isn't it worth it? Isn't it worth it? Isn't it worth the time going to the vet? Isn't it worth that your dog's healthy? Isn't it worth that you have a better relationship with the dog? It's just a little bit more. It's not much. And I, and I see that shrinking more and more and more as more companies get involved in it. And I see how expensive the kibble is getting that you know, in some cases, I don't think it's any increase, but you owe it. You owe it to them to provide the best you possibly can, or you shouldn't have a pet. Yeah, absolutely. Do do the best you can with what, what you have available and, 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 and try, try, right? <laughs> try for sure. So um, I know while well, we've switched foods and we've tried different things with Kim at one point, I had figured it out when I when I talked to um, Kimberly Gautier at Keep the Tail Wagging. I had actually sat down and like figured out exactly it was costing us a dollar eighty three a day to feed him at that point, which was like 
I don't know, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, so it's, it's, for me, I don't think it's that bad at all. But um, yeah, there are a lot of people that will do DIY to save money. So it's it's time or money, right? Like that's what they're they're trading their time for for a little extra money. But um, what are some of the craziest misconceptions you've heard about raw feeding? <laughs> oh, I heard a crazy one. This is, you'll remember this too. We were going to the vet. And the vet we had in San Diego was all on board with it. She's like, yeah, I know. I just, I, I wasn't trained and I don't know the nutritional value and all that stuff, but I know a raw food diet is much better and those dogs are healthy. But she says, people are really afraid because there's crazy things that are going on. She says, I know of a vet's office where they were bringing in a dog one day and they announced to everybody in there, raw food dog is coming in. This dog eats, you know, raw food diet. As if there was some bacteria or something they could catch from the dog. They literally announced it. Craziest thing in the world I've ever seen. It should be the other way around. This dog eats kibble, so no telling what the dog's going to do. Because if you think about it, guys, I mean, just stop and use logic for a second. When dogs were in the wild, when dogs were in the wild, did they wait for an animal to decay for days and then chop it up and then light a fire and then cook it down into pellets and eat it? Or did they eat the freshest things they possibly could out in the wild? It only makes sense. Okay. It's a fact. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, even the, the lady we were, where we were training last night, when I, the client I was training last night, she had a hard time. She was like, you mean raw? And then I was texting her um, later after this we got home. Yeah. And I was telling her that Kim's favorite snack or, or chicken hearts. And she was like, I'm sorry, did you, you mean like real chicken hearts? <laughs> <It's> like, <yeah. laughs> well, they're freeze dried, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, they are freeze dried, but they are actual whole chicken hearts. Yeah. And I was it's like, lovely. look, I get it. Like I used to be vegetarian. I completely understand the mindset of like, oh, that's, that's gross. But in all reality, we in the U.S., we don't eat chicken hearts on a regular basis. I mean, my husband might, but most people, <laughs> most people don't. So that would be waste. And that's so wasteful. So, you know, that's how I try to look at it. At least it's like we're using more of the, of the animal and we, and providing a really healthy snack for, for our dog. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it is interesting. Some of the things people say, so yeah, I think we so I think we've covered it all. Right? Is there anything else you want to add about I don't think you could ever cover it all. I remember you talking last night and no, uh, you you could talk for <laughs> hours. I know you could. I think one thing that you do want to address though, um, and there has been a movement for humans to eat a raw food diet. Okay. Now humans have evolved over the years. We figured out cooking and you know, we changed our diets and our bodies have adapted to cooked food. And I, I'm, you know, and I know there's going to be people that are disagree with me, but cooked food, I think, is better for a human at this point. I really do. Um, dogs can't evolve to accept kibble because it's not an improvement of what they had. It is something that is chemically manufactured and, and derived uh, because somebody wanted to make some money. Kibble has not always been around. I mean, you know, in the early 1900s, people fed, you know, the, the rats and the, you know, animals around and squirrels. And that's what the dog ate. OK, or scraps from the table. That's what the dog ate. So really, kibble is a new thing. So if you think, well, I don't want to feed raw food because that's just too new of an idea. No, it's always been around. What's new is kibble. And it's just because maybe it's only been around in your lifetime. But kibble is the new thing. And kibble is not good for your dog. If you get nothing from this podcast. You know, we did this for one reason. Kibble will make your dog sick. It's a fact. It will make your dog sick. You can do more research. You can listen to some more of Jessica's uh, podcast or videos or whatever. It's going to make your dog sick. So if you don't take this step and change, you're contributing to the poor health of your animal. They'll do that. Yeah, kibble has only been around since um, World War II. Oh, that's recent. Good. Yeah. Um, there were, you know, commercially available dog foods prior, uh, but they were wet foods. They were in cans. So yeah, kibble, it was, it was the metal rations that forced the 
pet food companies to have to find an alternative solution that they could package in paper and plastic. Um, so that's- Because it was a shortage of cans, right? Yes. Yes? What do you know? <laughs> We're experiencing that now. <laughs> we are, aren't we? Yeah. All right, so um, overall, it's probably one of the best things we've ever done for our dogs. Well, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't look back either. I just thought it would be really interesting to get your perspective. Cause I think I was definitely the one pushing for everything the whole way. <laughs> yeah. I was just going through life with these blinders like this, you know? Well, it just wasn't on your radar. Yeah. You know? I, I investigate other things. Exactly. We have different areas of interest. So, um, and, 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 I know my areas of interest are not everybody else's areas of interest. So to get your perspective, I thought was very important. So I appreciate that. Perfect. I appreciate you being here and thank you for bringing up the shirt that I am What's wearing. What's the deal with the shirt? Can you fill people in? I mean, you got this cool shirt and then I know. what if people want one of those shirts? Okay. So if you were just listening to the podcast here, can you set up a little bit higher so they can see the words on the bottom. Yes. No, so not, if not you're close. Just there you go. There you go. So it's You're got gonna have dogs to me. It's got a dog there. And what is that last thing? I can't, it's real small at the bottom. It, is, it says the pet parenting reset. So that's oh. basically what you're doing is you're resetting people from the old ways of doing things to what works now. Thank yes. You. So if you want to get your hands on this t-shirt or if you want it in a hoodie or no, if you one want like it in a t-shirt. not getting that t-shirt. Yeah. You one can just get like that. You can get this t-shirt. <laughs> it says talk dogs to me. It has a really beautiful dog on it and it's available for order today. All you have to do is go to the pet parenting reset.com and in the can navigation, the menu, I'm sorry. Can you put that on the screen? Oh, can I? Yeah. Ooh. The pet parenting reset.com that way. Cause it's so hard. I know I hear people say this stuff. And then they, you know, I, I don't, I don't write it down or something. Let's see. I know you I think can. I can. Here, let me, I got to type it in one second. Yeah. I think you put it in the chat. I could be wrong. Here we go. Then you highlight it. Save. Show. There we go. Okay, there we go. The pet parent. Oh, let me, hang on. Let me edit it. It didn't come out quite right. It's. Oh, well, did, did you type it wrong? I just, I want, let me, I need to capitalize the R. Oh. Here we go. The petparentingreset.com. And Ooh. in the navigation menu, you will see merch. And click there, it'll take you to the Teespring store. And there are actually a few different designs. Um, this is the very first one with our launch today. So all of you wonderful pet parents listening. Well, what are the other designs, if you don't mind sharing that? So we, I currently have three designs. Okay. You're going to get the Talk Dogs to Me is the first design, which is what I'm wearing today. And I absolutely love this one. This actually, my husband, a few years ago, came up with <laughs> the words. I just had to put it together on a shirt with a dog and, and make it all work. But it's talk dogs to me. And so this is the very first design. The second design, which you're going to see in next next week's podcast um, is play with your cat. And it has a really cute picture of a cat on it. And then the third design is play with your dog. And then there's a different dog on that design. Can you see all of those now if they go to that website? If you go to the petparentingreset.com and you click on merch, you will have access to all three designs. Okay. Um, so over the next, if you're if you're watching the podcast on YouTube or Rumble, you'll be able to see the shirt here. Otherwise, go to the petparentingreset.com and click on merch. You'll be able to see all of the designs. Um, next week's podcast is a really, really special podcast. And I will be showing you the play with your cat t-shirt in that podcast. Uh, so I'm really excited to be able to provide these to y'all. I absolutely love the designs. And I obviously, I mean, I created them, <laughs> but I created them for you to show everyone around you just how much you love your dog and your cat and how passionate you are about being the best pet parent you can be. So 
that's why these came out. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And those come in different sizes, I guess. You can get any size. I have, so, there are so many different options. There are, you know, regular crew neck shirts. I prefer the V-neck. Oh, so they have different, different types of shirts too. Yep. I've got the oh. V-neck on. I just happen to prefer wearing a V-neck because I don't like stuff up on my neck. And um, you can get a hoodie or a sweatshirt. Oh, I also wow. have. Okay. Yeah. Different colors or anything? Different colors, all kinds oh of gosh. different colors. Okay, I'm all in. Pick pick what you like best, what you think looks best on you. I like white because I'm very pale, so it, it actually makes me look like I have some color. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Talk Dogs to me is the very first, very first. I like it. Of the line and you can get your hands on your very own talk dogs to me t-shirt by going to the pet parenting reset.com and clicking on merch now while you're at the pet parenting reset.com you can also check out all the past podcast episodes they're all linked right there for you um, and you can get to you can get to pretty much everything else there because i have my link tree linked there as well so if you want to get to the amazon store if you have an interest in, you know, maybe you're getting a new puppy. Guess what? I've got a whole shopping list for everything you need for a new dog coming into your house on my Amazon storefront. You can get there from my link tree, which is also, like I said, available at the petparentingreset.com. There's just so much information. Like I, I have so much great, great information out there for you guys that I, I can't even remember everything I put out there. <laughs> But I want to thank my husband again. His name is J.R. Fisher. And um, yeah, if you want to check him out, you can do so. He's on, I don't know, what socials are you on these days? Um, I'm on Facebook, uh, J.R. Fisher or J.R. Fisher Training. Um, if you on YouTube also, J.R. Fisher Training. Uh, and I primarily focus on teaching people how to um, start, run, and grow online businesses and fire their boss. Fire their box. That's what I did. What? 12 years ago almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. And then your company, Survival Cave Food, right? Survival Cave Food, uh, you want to prepare. I mean, we've all seen how prices have gone up on everything. Uh, so I don't know if you can stick that on the screen or not, but Survival Cave Food uh, is my main company. And we manufacture uh, five different kinds of meats, beef, chicken, turkey, pork, and ground beef. However, we have shortages right now, like everybody else. So uh, get on there and get what you can while you can um okay. yep there it is survivalcatefood.com and you probably have a discount code for your your people right that you all oh i do it's pet parent all one word Oops. pet parent so if you go to survivalcatefood.com you type in pet parent you can get some of our delicious canned meats uh we've been making them for over a decade now uh and they're very very popular if you looked on uh there you go that's the discount code Look at you, you you're, see, so you're getting all technical now. You do all this stuff. Getting all, all technical. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so, so very much for hanging in there with us on this podcast. There was so much great information. And make sure to check out the new merch and get your hands on your very own Talk Dogs to Me t-shirt, hoodie, sweater, whatever you prefer. And then once you get it, and you wear it, take a picture of yourself, post it to social media, use the hashtag, the pet parenting reset, which I'm, fo I follow that hashtag. So I will see it and I will repost it in my stories. So thank you so much for listening. Make sure you are following the podcast, wherever you get your podcast, make sure you're following and you have reviewed the podcast as well, because that's how the, uh, network podcast network that you listen to knows that you like it and also can suggest it to other people so the whole goal is to get the word out to as many people as possible and i need your help to do that so rate and review the show and make sure you give us a follow thank you so much for being here next week is going to be amazing so if you haven't already clicked that follow make sure you do because you are not going to want to miss next week's episode Thank you again to my husband, JR, for being here. I appreciate you so much and for uh, going through this crazy journey <laughs> with us and the pets. And until next week, guys, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, if I could talk, wonderful, wonderful week. Give your pets some extra love from me 
and from my husband this week. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, oh, oh.